Hello, good evening, everyone. You are watching SGTV with Indranil Basu. Today we have a former Bengal uh, Ranji Trophy cricketer, Mr. Gautam Shom Jr. Uh, there were two Gautam Shoms actually. One was a senior, who was also a fast bowler, and we have another who was a fast bowling all rounder. Can I say like that, Gautam? <laughs> yes, correct, correct. You can say that. Both sector, no problem. No, no, you know, I mean, this is uh, your story is quite remarkable. Someone who started uh, uh, as a bowler who could bat and and played Bengal as a batsman later on in the you know you know in the second half of your if your of your uh, Ranji Trophy career so that was remarkable. Yes, uh, I started off as a uh, bowler who can bat. Yeah, uh, and uh, my debut was like. Uh, I played my first bowler for Bengal, huh. and I played all this Bengal. I mean, the league trophy, the other trophy, both for Kings Eleven and uh, India Under Twenty Five. Got huh. chance as a medium pace and medium fast bowler. But uh, after playing the Ranji Trophy final at Delhi Eight Eighty Nine, then yes. I got uh, uh, I got uh, injured. So huh. that injury. Uh, I mean, finished my bowling. I, 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 took, I missed my first class career for five five years, more than that. Five years, yes, that's a long yes. time. So, I started... sorry, no, no, I, I see cricketers' ka yehi ek willpower hai. In that five years, you didn't quit the game. You kept fighting, and you came back as a batsman. That was remarkable. Yes, uh, no other option. So I started. Batting in the upper half for my club, and slowly, slowly, I, uh, I started scoring runs and got into the chance of Bengal team as a batsman. So I came back in the Bengal team in '96, '97, and in the Wills Trophy. Yes, as a batsman, and after that, I played one and a half season as a batsman for Bengal. Then I quit. And then you have to go under the knife. You know, you got operation done for your uh, for your. Uh, I think it was your. Uh, uh, your ankle. There's, there was some some problem with the yeah. ankle. I had my operation done in the year of ninety uh, two. Yeah, uh, ninety two or ninety two. But uh, that time, uh, medical facility or the treatment was not that advanced now like nowadays. So mm -hmm. nowadays it's not at all any problem. Maybe two four months and six months you can come back to the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but that time it was very difficult. There is no. Uh, what do you say? I mean, uh, nowadays we take the issue very promptly and we take care. But that time it was not possible uh, because that person medicalized nonsense was not at that height. So anyway, it is part of my life and I take it as it comes. So I no regret. Absolutely, and this is the common language of all the cricketers. You know, whoever has played first class cricket, there are no regrets because playing. First class cricket itself is a huge, huge achievement. I remember in 80, 80, 88, 89 season, uh, Bengal did reasonably well, and you were part of the team and very integral part of the team. And beating Punjab in the quarters and and uh, I think Tamil Nadu in the semis and got beaten. That was an unforgettable uh, final uh, in, at Kotla. I mean, Kotla really came in, in in full throttle. I mean. This completely honored Bengal in that game. Mm -hmm. Unforgettable game. But till then, it was a dream run. Correct, correct. Uh, uh, we played final at Delhi at that time, yes. at the And uh, Madipa was captain for Delhi. Captain yes. Captain. Yes. Madipa was the uh, KT as a Ajay Sharma, Pedro Walker, all the stars were there. Very good side. Sakesh, yes. uh, uh, then uh, Ramal Lamba. Yes, good, uh, good, Karan, Rasi, all were there. So they are a great side. They had, at that time, they are, they are a brilliant side. But uh, anyway, uh, so we played at Kotla. So we became that, 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 that was that was quite a final. I mean, all of these uh, middle order guys, Bantu Singh, Bhaskar Pillai, Kirti, other. I think all of them got hundreds. If I'm not mistaken. Right. right. <laughs> it was a. I mean, I, 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 I wonder, you know, when you, this is, this is what happens. It's a funny game when you, when you do well throughout the league phase, then you 
do well in the quarters, semis, and then you face something like that in the final. It's very tough, isn't it? You're not prepared for it. No, 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 no. Prepared for it is not the right word because you're playing in a little bit of finals. You're expected to do uh, very tough opponents. And uh, our show could have been better because in the first inning, we got out in GP. And at that time, Kosha Kotla wicket was like a cement. Yeah. So, uh, if you get set, uh, they have to come to get out. So, anyway, in that match, uh, we bowled well. I mean, if you, uh, what do you remember, but uh, they played well. I, I have to give them the new credit that they did uh, there. And, uh, but, Gautamda, you know, you have been, you have still, you are still got a lot of cricket in you. I mean, the fact that you, the way you are uh, uh, guiding the Meghalaya cricket team, they recently beat Bombay. It was last year, in fact, isn't it? So, you no, no, still, no, no, no. yeah, we will we'll come to that. But looking at the standard of wickets during your time, you talked about Kotla being a cement kind of a track, absolutely belter. Uh, very good for the bat batting, batting, uh, 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 powerful batting side. But now, if, when you see uh, uh, the wickets at domestic cricket, has has it improved? We we talked about so many things like neutral curator, uh, uh, this and that. But do you think is there any remarkable improvement in the standards of wickets being prepared for domestic games? Absolutely, because nowadays you see, uh, you will find a lot of wickets where you can, can get a good carry and bowl. But most of the time in our day, spinner used to dominate. So, we could do to make like a huge return from, say, after one day, it will become a third. Mm. And nowadays, you see that patients are getting a lot of that kind of wicket, what you say that um, I said before that hardly good bounce and carry. So, that's the reason. That's why you are getting so many patients for our country. And this is a, one of the reasons, I believe. Big other reasons are also there. Uh, and people now love to bowl fast because want to bowl fast because they get some assistance from wicket there. So unless you get success, how uh, it's very difficult for you to looking forward. So now this nowadays the wickets are really good for the. I mean, I, I would say one word is the sporting wicket. So now the theaters have come. There is a lot of. Uh, I mean, not only people are working for the for wickets, for preparing the wickets. So it is a good mm. thing, good thing for Indian cricket. Absolutely, but uh, I, when you played, I remember one uh, very interesting stat. I mean, not many can boast of getting Sunny Javaskar out in a in a Ranji game. You did. <laughs> no, no, no. The match was not that year. No, no, no. Getting a uh, so Nilvai's wicket was it's a prize wicket. I got it. That doesn't mean that. Uh, uh, okay, it was in a game in the top match against the West at Pune. I got him out in nineties. So well, it is it is a prize wicket for me. I mean, I can say that I played a little bit of cricket. <laughs> As a, I mean, I am. He remembers that. He remembers that. He's got a real, real. He remembers each and every dismissal of his. That's the greatness of that. Batsman, you remember yes, every, sure. every sure because uh, I'm talking after 10 or 12 years in the 90, late 90s, he came to Calcutta to see Rohan. And Rohan was playing with me in the same club, so we bumped up each other in one occasion. So he told me that, uh, oh, he got me out at 90. I was very <laughs> surprised to seeing his memory that uh, he still remembers me for that. He's a great, he's a great, great man. Absolutely, but uh, we have also heard stories about how uh, Sunny Gavaskar sir used to count his runs when he used to bat. So, is it is it a, a phenomena with the current cricketers? Or do they look at the scorecard, the scoreboard, or or do they actually count their runs and play? But does it help your batting when you're counting and playing? Uh, I have come across few cricketers who used to do that. That every run they score, they used to count even. I know one uh, player, uh, probably I've heard his name, Bodhi Pandey. Uh, he said to me, he has yes. played for very long. He used to count his run and I always the opponent I mean his uh, partner's run. <laughs> so when I used to bat with him, I say, hey, Bodhi, how, how much is my score? He will say that. But nowadays, <laughs> what happened? 
So now it is what happened. Now the big scoreboard, you see your news, your report, but it is. But in our time, there is a small, you can uh, remember that small uh, scoreboard standing in the one corner. And only mainly it was to highlight the team score and the weekends, not the individual one. That is, that is to come in the Donji Trophy or in the maybe on the good matches. But mainly it was the team score and the weekends. But nowadays, in every match, you get that uh, individual scores also taken care of. So, I think well, from that thing, uh, Sunny Bhai was counting his run his earlier days. When he started playing cricket, I don't think there was scoreboard in the ground. Because only the scorer used to write the score. And it was saying you say, your batting at this. So, that prompted him to score his own runs in his younger days. So, that's how he was there with him until he played. But does, does it help your concentration when you're counting your runs and batting? Uh, maintaining concentration uh, is, a, is an art. So different, uh, different people have different, uh, has different way to maintain it. Like only the doctor may be counting runs. People uh, are to pop in his concentration in one spot on the uh, ground. He told it in Japan that I used to pick one tree or one flag and I used to keep, uh, keep looking at that while I was I used to bat. So that's where he used to maintain his concentration. Seva, Brenda Seva used to sing. So it is a, it is a different, there is no hard and fast rule that, that this way you can maintain your concentration. In our uh, younger days, uh, coaches used to say, the watch the ball. From the pure hand to the sleeve, flip to the gully, gully to cover. When the pulse the ball, don't lose the ball from your eye and you can maintain your concentration. That is the one way of the show. So it depends on the first point and how you get your uh, concentration level and from let's say general concentration to fierce concentration level and uh, when the ball is played you relax and again concentrate very hard at the time of delivery so there are uh, procedures and uh, way to uh, concentrate but tell me something if a batting i mean from a co coach's point from players point from batsman point of view, from point of view uh, if if you're playing a one-day match and if you face a lot of dot balls and pressure mounts on you or playing a T20 game, if you have two, three dot balls, pressure mounts on you. So how to, uh, and, and especially, especially in, in ODI cricket and, and how to, how to control that, uh, that sort of adrenaline from inside, which comes that rush of blood, then you have to hit the ball, get some runs, get the scoreboard ticking. So what's the best way to keep your nerves calm? I mean, what's the way to do it? Well, it, it happens in every match that you play a few dot balls and uh, uh, it depends what is the match scenario, what is the situation, what is the situation demand. So if there is no, if you, you are chasing a comfortable run rate, so it doesn't matter if you defend three, four balls. So maybe you can give one more, uh, less, I mean, one or two runs. In about 20, 20, uh, that means 50 overs, you have got more time. So now you have to plan that uh, it is a castle of a fight between the bowler and the batsman. The bowler is planning out something, you are planning something. You know, you see the field, you can, you can setting up the field, you should get up which length or which line is going to bowl or attack it. So you have played a few dot balls, so now you need to plan. So you have to play ball by ball. It doesn't mean that. Uh, after playing three balls, you play uh, three sides short and get out. That that doesn't uh, help yourself as well as your team. So you have to plan. Okay, three more dot balls. Now what should what should I do? Okay, take a go to the other end. Let your partner to take the charge, or you want to do something different. It depends. It is it uh, depends players to player, and uh, they should uh, figure it out uh, depending on the situation and their. Uh, Match situation and the uh, wickets and other things. So, population has to be very uh, particular at that point. Okay. But, Gautana, I think there's a little disturbance coming from your side, from the audio bit. If you can kindly remove okay. the headphones, probably because of the headphones connectivity. Probably, if you can just do it hands free. Okay, let Are me see. Let me see. Ah, don't show, hey, don't show. Hey, don't show. We, we, we talked to Gautam Shom uh, Jr. is a former 
I think uh, because you know constantly because having a great chat on cricket about certain technique things like scoring uh, you know when you're batting a batsman is there on the field uh, how you you can uh, do it differently how you can uh, make it uh, uh, how you have to count your runs how you have not you do not need, need not be counting your runs because you have a huge huge score scoreboard right in front of you these days so. Uh, talking about the earlier days when there was no access to uh, score scorecard uh, uh, score the the live score that easily it, things have happened you know I mean things have moved on so much in cricket which is a great great uh, sight and and he was talking about the kind of wickets they used to play on and and the, how the home team used to walk away with all the advantages you know I mean that that's how Ranji Trophy cricket used to be. Used, used to get get played, but now things have changed. We have new curators at domestic cricket. BCC has done a tremendous job getting everyone together. Uh, you know, the, all the curators going in different venues, uh, building and uh, making pitches, which is a great, uh, great phenomenon. We are seeing a great uh, improvement in standards. But I'm not, I'm not trying to say that the standards we had was bad. It was equally good. But how uh, we have gotten technology into preparing wickets, uh, how the batsmen, their mindset have uh, 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 has changed over 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 the decades. How uh, you know people used to count runs while playing, and now things have changed. Uh, we're waiting for Gautam Shun to join back. This little bit of problem with the audio because we were having a nice discussion about how uh, it's important not to uh, get carried away. Uh, uh, you know, just to control your rush of blood when you're you played a maiden over. In a, in a one day game, you should just wait for the right opportunity. If you are really feeling that adrenaline inside, take a walk, you know, towards the leg umpire, come back to your crease and take your guard and then play. Uh, you have to respect the bowlers also who are in, in the side, who were playing, playing the match for, uh, 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 you know, for, for the, in the opponent's side. So those things are very important in cricket. We're still waiting for Gotham to join us. And it's, it's a lovely, lovely sport if you play it in the right spirit. And which is what SG has been trying to cover all the possible Ranji Trophy players who've made, uh, who represented their states in different uh, uh, capacities. Uh, Abhipreet Banerjee, hi. Uh, so there are a lot of people. Uh, Karthi, Kartika Das, he also said hi. And we were just engrossed in the, in the conversation, couldn't see your uh, chat earlier. But yes, coming to that, uh, that how cricket has moved on. Uh, from uh, certain positions, you know, what it was earlier and what it is now. We're seeing a huge uh, change of attitude. We saw how Sri Lankans, uh, uh, you know, in, in Sri Lanka, the Indian team, the fearlessness these guys showed um, against Sri Lanka, you know, chasing uh, 260 odd runs and how the likes of Prithvi Shaw, Ishan Kishan, Surya Kumar Yadav. I mean, look at the kind of robustness we have uh, in our. In our uh, in our system right now, it's it's completely different. Uh, we have already like fifty odd players ready to play for India. That's the standard we are talking about. We're waiting for Gautam Shum Junior to join us, uh, talking about domestic cricket, which is uh, going to start this year. I mean, last year we couldn't have much of cricket because of uh, the pandemic. This year we're fortunately having Ranji Trophy. We we're all excited, and uh, we hope that uh, this year it's going to be uninterrupted which is very important we're not going to have ipl and world t20 at home so all the grounds will be, will be available for bcci to conduct these matches uh women cricket matches where well we are not have, going to have the league trophy unfortunately because there is no uh time for it but uh, we hope and and keeping our fingers crossed that this time the league trophy, uh, ranji trophy happens and happens in, in 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 full swing and and hopefully there won't be any any problem uh, uh, with the uh, with with with, uh, with the problem we had with IPL, you know, there was the second wave came and really disrupted things. Hopefully, this year is going to be completely different. We're still waiting for Mr. Gautam Shum to join join back and uh, talk about uh, what's happening. He's 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 a he's a coach who's looked after the Bengal Junior Cricket for a long time and now moved on and also the senior team uh, where 
Lakshmi Nandan Shukla used to uh, uh, be part of the Bengal team. I'm talking about that phase. Now he's moved on to Meghalaya cricket team and he's joined back. Uh, uh, so, and we have a lot to talk about. You know, a lot of things are happening in Indian cricket. Uh, things like a lot of states, a lot of states are uh, getting players from outside. So, is it good for, for, for the person you joined back? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, this is so much better. This is, I, was, okay. I was talking about the robustness of our of our of Indian cricket, how things have really become big for for all of us. But coming to that point uh, about uh, about uh, dot balls, dot balls. I mean, what's the best way to get get rid of that rush of blood? You know, you you, you want to just go out of the crease and hit the ball. So how to control that that adrenaline, that that rush of blood? I mean, what what are the steps a batsman should take? Oh, well, uh, it can happen at any time. I mean, uh, but it depends what is the situation demands. And accordingly, you have to make your plan. If you play a dot ball for two, three balls, it yeah. doesn't mean you have to get out in fourth ball or play, play a breast stroke. So uh, the batsman has to decide that uh, what is the next, what is the plan for the next ball? Because he has to play ball by ball. It doesn't yeah. matter. So next three balls, he has to plan how he's going to probably the very next ball he has to plan first, then the next one. So well, one ball by ball, what I say. And that time he, he has to take a deep breath, whatever. You have to control his emotions, that uh, how he can do that. Because it, pressure should be there, is always there. Uh, you're playing uh, whatever match you play, pressure should be always there. So he should know how to handle the pressure. So he should not succumb to the pressure and he should plan for the next ball, what I say. So that planning has to, uh, he has to see the field, he has to uh, see the bowler's plan, I mean, guess, preempt the bowler's plan, what is going to, uh, which line or which length is going to deliver and what shot he's going to play and how. So he has to have it to one or two, three plans in his mind that if I got this idea, I play this shot. If I get this idea, I'll play this shot, something like that. So. It happens automatically when uh, mature players, they take uh, good decisions. So that's why they are successful. Like uh, if you have seen the Dhoni, Pirat, they all are very smart players. Even A.B. De Villiers, especially in T20s, how he improvised, how he uh, disturbed the bowler by changing uh, length and things and like that. Moving inside, moving out, coming forward, going back. So these are the all... Uh, uh, part of the plan. So, a successful player has to make a uh, good plan, which uh, where is his chances to getting the success more. So that that makes a difference between an ordinary player and a good player. Absolutely, so true. But tell me something. You have been a bowler. You have been a batsman. So mm. who needs to plan more? Is it the bowler or the batsman? <laughs> Before a match, big match, we know all all come up with the with the plan. They study the opponents their opponent batsmen, how they are going to apply themselves. They do all the homework. But eventually, who has who has to plan more? Is it the batsmen or the bowlers? No, it is not a plan more or less. It is both has to plan because batsmen uh, will... I'm plan, talking about uh, the magnitude. Magnitude of planning. I mean, will it... Someone will have to... I mean, if you're batting, it's completely instinctive. And insti instinctive batting means you're not planning much. You, you know, you're, you have a certain game plan. That's a bigger picture. But when you're bowling, you bowl with a plan. You have to bowl to the batsman to a certain plan. So that I want to know that difference. How different is it? It is a little different because if you are a batsman, you should know you you should plan your batting. Guess what you said, the game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, you should analyze the opponent bowler, who are mm -hmm. the bowlers, what they mm -hmm. bowl. Mm -hmm. Then you have to see the wickets. If you bat mm -hmm. first, how the wicket may behave. If you bat second, mm -hmm. you have an idea. Because you are fielding, you know how the wicket is going to be. But if you bat first, so if you are an opener, you have to guess now what what kind of way. Because about but if you are a middle order batsman, then you have little opportunity to see <coughs> how the wicket is behaving. Mm. And accordingly, you make your game plan. The what shot I can play now? What um, what should be my uh, game plan? Because you have to score runs with your strong in your strong areas. Because what you are 
strong i mean what are your strong area that you need to score run in that uh, area so that will give you more edge over the bowler and as a bowler when you playing a match you should analyze a batsman also that who is which is his strong area suppose somebody is very strong in square of the wicket somebody is very strong of this leg somebody is a good driver of the ball so, so you have to analyze his strong and weak areas accordingly you have to formulate your own plan uh, who is uh, you should so bowlers uh, aim would be to bowl more into his weak areas not to give him to score runs in his i mean to batsman allow batsman to score runs in his strong areas through his strong areas so that that these are the different the kind, little different kind of planning okay but uh, tell me something i mean has coaching coaching uh, become more structured in last decade or so absolutely absolutely i totally agree with you because now uh, coaching through nca and uh, all the uh, i mean country if say australia england they have started their own coaching programs all all the countries are having that and in india nca is doing a good job mm -hmm. and all the coaches are getting educated science has come into the play biomechanics has come into the play mm -hmm. and uh, now it has made us a better coach i mean uh, frankly speaking at what i was coaching 15 years back now i am a better coach because i have learned a lot of things uh, throughout my this journey so it is making all of us better uh, day by day and uh, the i mean the, what i uh, that told you the biomechanics has a great role to play in these things because yeah. it makes us uh, understand uh this uh, i mean the player better i mean his style his pattern uh, these things matters most so yes uh, uh, coaching has uh, obviously coaching standard has improved in india and uh, the indian coaches are doing a great job you can see the results absolutely absolutely, absolutely. what is really heart heartening uh, to see is that so many indians are uh, become a resourceful uh, uh, you know coaching staff in ipl team which wasn't the case uh, a decade ago they is to fill the teams with foreigners now we are getting a lot of indian uh, throwdown specialists assistant coaches fielding coaches bowling coaches which is a great news for all those who retired from the game a lot of talent their talent scouters you know they are from india they doing a great job and and that's 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 a great thing about uh, ipl it's, it not only uh, gets an income to the current cricketers also the former cricketers coaches of repute and there is no age bar I mean, John Wright coming down and 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 going around the country and trying to scout talent, which is a great great thing about India. And IPL has really set the bar high, isn't it, Gorunda? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. I totally agree with you. But I need I personally believe that more Indian coaches should get chance. Like only Anil Bai and uh, to some extent you can name it uh, in the Bombay Indians. Uh, or most of the uh, uh, coaches are Indians, and uh, in the Hyderabad, Lakshman is working. But <clears throat> I think uh, more Indian coaches should uh, play a role in the as a head coach because I think there are a lot of capable coaches who can do that job uh, well. So I am don't mind that foreigners are coming and working here. We should take the best out of them, and uh, we should learn and uh, we should employ our best. Uh, I mean, uh, coaches coaches in the system. Absolutely, and there's also a sort of uh, debatable thing about, uh, like in Bengal, you get a lot of cricketers from away from <laughs> it, away outside Bengal to come and play in Bengal, and they they do well, they get a chance based on their performance, and the guys who are in Bengal, they feel they're deprived, and this is a story in lot only in Bengal, in lot of states, and you 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 you're coaching a team like Meghalaya, so I mean, what, how do you how do you take this as a challenge for <laughs> guys who are already part of the state and not getting enough uh, opportunity because of outsiders coming in. It's like it's like Delhi colleges. Delhi colleges that attract a lot of students across India, and and so many people rush in. Then you know the local Delhiites they don't have any enough slots for uh, to get admission there. So that's that's a real problem. So how do you tackle this? Well, there uh, it has got two sides. You see that. Uh, Suppose somebody is coming from outside and playing here, 
mm. of Bengal. I'm saying about Bengal. So mm. it should not be uh, easy. I mean, open to them. You have to, like in Bombay, if, if you want to play for Bombay, you have to play there for three years continuously. If you perform well, then you will get a chance. You will be considered for your state team. Mm -hmm. uh, and same thing here also. Somebody is coming here and playing from his childhood, say 13, 14 years. Say, uh, a woman know he started playing here from age of 12. Mm -hmm. uh, Raman, he came here at the age of 12, he started playing and he became Bengali. I mean, so they, these these boys are not. Mohammed Shami, Mohammed Shami, for instance. Uh -huh. He came here at a younger age and started playing. After three, four years, he got chance in the Ranji Trophy. Yeah. Uh, he didn't play for under 22 or anything, I believe. Uh, he still yes, got yes. in the Ranji Trophy side. Yeah. But the, what's happening now that if anybody comes here, somehow he makes a local uh, identity and he's been considered for Bengal team within a year or something like that. So that is wrong. That is fraudulent use, <clears throat> fraudulent use of... Uh, so that has to be stopped. And uh, CEB, I think, believe I saw in the paper, they are trying their level best to stop that. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen, somebody coming from outside and taking a place for the son of the soil, mm -hmm. the player boy who is working very hard from his uh, younger age to, Absolutely. Absolutely. to represent state in the high level. And he's being deprived. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that is, uh, that is that has to be tackled by very, by very uh, firmly. Okay, you uh, you want to play where Calcutta, Bengal, uh, for Bengal, play here for three years or whatever the years they de decide. And if you perform well, then only you will be considered. That is, and one thing I am not against that uh, players from outside they come and coming and playing here, but there should be some restrictions. Say every club now there is a restriction also that two or three people they can play in each match. So what will happen if you stop that? You will. Uh, not get a good competition sometimes. But if you allow them, good players will come and play your rubbing shoulder with the good players in the yeah. club matches. So total standard will also improve. So there is a pros and cons, both sides of the thing. But as an administrator, you have to balance it properly. So Absolutely. your son of the soil should not be deprived. Absolutely. And they should get ample scope to uh, I mean, establish them. So th there was also a thought that when uh, Teams like Meghalaya, Uttarakhand, <laughs> Chandigarh, uh, you know, all these uh, Sikkim and all these teams got into Ranji Trophy. Uh, Northeast teams, for instance, and and uh, Uttarakhand and Chhattisgarh. So, you know, they say that Ranji Trophy is diluted. So, how do you see it? Of, of course, there is elite, there is played divisions, <laughs> there are divisions, two divisions, but how do you how do you see? I mean, you are coaching a side, Meghalaya, which is a Northeast team. Uh, we have heard about a lot of things happening in, in I mean, not much of cricket happening in that part of part of part of India. But no, no. how how do you see? <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, let me have a sip of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem, what you said, it has happened first year, especially the people from outside they went there and played. Yeah. The local boys missed out. Yeah. And. Uh, but uh, in Begala, I can say, but I cannot comment about the other states. Yeah. But <coughs> Begala, they are very strict about it. So only the three players from outside, they are taking as a guest player. Mm. So these three is playing and the rest of the boys are all local boys. And uh, and they are promoting their local boys. So And they are started doing well now. I mean, if you see our uh, year before last, even last year, the local boys have started performing. Even they have one of the boys has scored 100 in the Ranji also. Even mm. taking wickets, five wickets, all and performance is there. Mm. <coughs> but the problem is in the north is that they have to in improve the infrastructure okay. and the matches, more matches for the boys because they get very little match to play. And the infrastructure they are uh, coming up. Few states have already come up with that. Nagaland has a good infrastructure. Mm. But as you see, Kim has done it. Uh, Meghala is, they are preparing it. They have only done the ground work. I believe the other things will be done very shortly. And uh, the thing is that, uh, so I tell the Meghala boys to go out and play, go out with the play, go to Delhi, Bangalore, whatever, wherever you play and play club cricket. So you play more matches, you learn more, you, know, you get, become more mature. <clears throat> experience yeah, yeah. whatever quality yeah so they have to go out and play go at they get a better standard of game i mean in northeast they play cricket little bit of cricket that too not a 
that kind of a wicket and they most of them play very short and version of the game like 20 overs 40 overs but if okay. you want to improve your game so you have to play longer version like two days three days or four days matches more uh i know it is problem but uh, they have to find out some way and uh, make it more matches happen for the local boys so to get they have a taste or they know what is a longer version of the game but do they have do they have league matches and all that league league, league tournaments yes yes they you have they have i uh, in uh, meghalaya i know that they have got 20 overs version and 40 overs version but they they last year due to covid everything was cut down and last two years not have didn't happen uh, but they play super league kind of thing for two days matches like that what i came across i mean came to mind so it's it's uh it's it's quite it was quite an experience you know beating bombay i mean can you tell us that story here yeah? meghalaya beat bombay a lot of people may not be aware of it it actually happened it was a vijay Ajari trophy match right no, 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 no. It was a Sayed Mustakali trophy. Uh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, Meghala is beaten Bombay. It is a great thing, great thing for Meghala cricket because uh, yeah. they started believing that they can win. That mm -hmm. is number one. And number two, I'll say that it happened once because we are ten, uh, tell a player another 10 times, Bombay will beat us another 10 times. This is not a thing. So, a T20 match, shorter version of game, everything went our way and uh, we won. Uh, so no, it is a very high-scoring match. I mean, they uh, they scored one eighty, we chased it. So it is not that uh, uh, very easy. But, I mean, wicket was bad. We, we played very well. I mean, in that match, we bowled well, we fielded well, we batted well. So anyway, but uh, that thing gave us a lot of uh, confidence in the team, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the, and that match turned the whole thing. I mean, the team's performance because people started believing i mean the players that earlier it was a uh, participation was a motor i mean you can't just play and go home because you lose and you, everything like that so i started changing that and once that thing happened we won the Bombay match and back to back we beat Assam, mm. and we played very well against uh mp and mm. Uh, mm. so uh, uh people now they start believing that we can also do that so that uh confidence has come into the all the boys into the team so now the, they uh, they uh, know that yeah i can get him out and i can score runs against this bowler also so, so it is a good thing for megala cricket and the megala cricketer as well absolutely and uh, as they say rome was not built in a day it takes right. time for every good things uh, to become big and I'm, right. I'm i'm sure with you at the helm of affairs there things will really, really get bigger with time. But coming to that self-belief, which is so important in cricket, and uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's our motto also of SG. Uh, mm -hmm. Believe, become. It's so so relevant in, and it, it's so much, so much relevant in life also that you have to believe that you have it and then you can become. You don't believe it can never become. That self-confidence is so important, isn't it? Perfect. Absolutely. Because if you don't believe that uh, you can do it, how are you going to do it? Uh, so, unless you dream that you are going to score 100 or taking 5 wickets or whatever, so mm -hmm. how, how is it going to happen? So, you have to visualize. You have, you have to see that force that you are going to score runs or 100 runs or 5 wickets, whatever. So, that self-belief has to come from within. And obviously, the circumstances and other things also matter. But the thing is that it is quite an uh, individual thing. And everybody should uh, uh, believe that. And as a coach, it is my job to make them believe, to ignite their thing. And uh, that's it, nothing else. But uh, self-belief is, I think, the key word. Because if you see that we are going into the bat, you see his eyes and things that he is going to score 100. Whether whatever X number of runs he scores, but he believes in himself that he is going to be the match winner. So that 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 says that changes everything. Gautamda, you have been a bowler yourself. You have been a coach. You're still a coach, and uh, after seeing so many bowlers, you know, fast bowlers across generation. Uh, if you were to name the most skillful bowler India has ever seen in the history of the game, 
who would be that bowler? Uh, I mean, you're talking about the paces or the spinners? Paces, pace, medium pace, uh, fast bowlers. I mean, of course, the fast bowlers, medium pace. <laughs> Uh, I became, uh, I mean, I started playing KK and following, I used to follow, uh, follow Kopil, Kopil Pali. He was a uh, dreamer. I mean, I used to dream that I'll bowl like uh, him at late out uh, pitching off scrum, just taking the neck, going to the creek with clubs. So it was a dream for me. And uh, he was our uh, idol at that time. Mm. So I think he's one of the best. After that, obviously, a lot of good bowlers have come. India has produced of late, if we. <clears throat> uh, Ishan Sinat. Sinat started the first bowling thing, first came from Srinat when he started yeah. bowling first. Yeah, yeah. And down the line, we got uh, these bowlers came into the system. And there are a lot of good bowlers. I mean, Srinath, if you take, uh, then you see uh, Shami, you take Bumbra, who's bowling well, you take uh, Ishan Sharma, he has taken 300 wickets in tests, uh, not a matter of joke as a first bowler. Uh, playing mostly most matches in India, so I have to give him the credit. But if you talk about the most skilled bowler, he has to be Kapil Dev, as per your book. Uh, to me, yes. <laughs> so true, so true. And who would be the best Indian cricketer? Will it be Sunny Gavaskar or, or Kapil Dev? Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very difficult question, but uh, who would be the best cricketer? Uh, all they are, great. They are, all, they are all great. I should say that they are all great at their time because Sunny Bhai, Kapil Bhai, Paji is their best at their time. You see, take after that Sachin, uh, Lakshman, Rahul, uh, Ganguly, all those are their best at their time. Now, the next, then Dhoni, Pirat. All they are great players and that they are time. So they cannot compare with this or that. He is the best, he is not that, he is, he is the best superior. I don't believe in that. They are all good players and they are uh, best players at their time. So true. So true. But you know what I really like? I was when you uh, when you had some problem with the mic with the audio, mm -hmm. I was telling the audience about uh, how cricket has become so fearless. These guys, this bunch of cricketers are absolutely ruthless. they they are not scared of getting out. They don't play on, you know, to save their reputation. They just right. go there and play their shots, no matter what. I mean, right. a guy like Prithvi Shaw, he's hitting good deliveries out, out of the park at will. Uh, look at uh, uh, Ishan Kishan. He starts with a four and a six, and like that, he's starting with boundaries like that. It's 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 sort of so easy. It's it's chalk and cheese for them, which is which is so uh, you know, I mean. Uh, this is so lovely. I mean, I, as a cricket lover, as a follower, as a journalist, it, it, this Indian cricket is getting into a really a sort of daredevil kind of a mode where people are not scared of, uh, they want to just play uh, to win. You know, that Rishabh Pan kind of an attitude. They, they are not bothered about getting out. That fear, fearless attitude, which is, which is what is defining the current Indian team. And this is the attitude which has given us the strength to have such a big uh, pool of players, 50 to 60 players already ready to play for India. And that's the reason it is it is happening, isn't it? Correct. Absolutely. If you see the uh, current bunch of boys, uh, they are fearless. I mean, they what you said earlier, absolutely perfect. Uh, they are not afraid of getting out. They play their game, whatever the situation it is, what you have saw, you have saw, seen in the last match. I think the kids should go to the first of first thing, I believe it should go to the IPL. Because they are, they are playing uh, with the best players of the world, rubbing shoulders, sharing dressing room, uh, exchanging views, seeing their attitude, how they prepare, how they plan. So uh, everything changes. That that brings a lot of confidence into you. That if hey, I'm I'm as good as him, so why not? And I think a uh, second thing is the case should go to the um, Indian. Coaches, administrators, selectors who are who tax them like, hey, don't worry, you, you go play your game, we'll see that you get a proper chance and then, whatever. <clears throat> so I think I should give them the credit also. So now so, we have got a very uh, transparent and effective system, I can say. Hmm. That's why we are seeing a, a surge of so many talents, which is a good news, and and you are. Also, of course, uh, 
taking care of a Ranji side, which is also a great, great opportunity for youngsters to, you know, from that part of India to come up and, and you're encouraging them to go and play club crickets all over India. It's more matches you play, better you get. That's the real theory of cricket. That's the basic of cricket. And Gotonga, it was really nice chatting with, with you because you are the man for learning the basics of the game. I've seen so many coaches. They're all good in their way, in, in their own way. They all all are tremendous coaches. But you have been really special. I've seen you. I've, I've worked under you also. It was very really special. I, thanks for coming on SGTV and sharing your views. Um, and uh, stay stay safe. And I wish you a very good Ranji season ahead uh, and, and do well with the team. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Indudil. And uh, thanks to you and the AZTV also. Because I, one thing I want to mention that AZ has sponsored me throughout my career. I can yes. remember that uh, 1890, after playing that final match, what it is a discuss, I yeah. went to their factory. Uh, okay. to, uh, I met uh, Kailash Bhai, Puneet there, and they took me for lunch. And, uh, they gave me some stuff for uh, bats and gloves and this and that. And after that, when I again came back in the Bengal team, they also gave gave me the kits at that time. So it was a great thing that time, getting kits from a. But they, I am thankful to them that they have supported me throughout my cricketing. And thank you, thank you once again, Indranil, for having me. Thank in your you. Show. Pleasure, 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 Gautam. My pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Bye. Good night.